Because of the length of the video, I've decided to break this up into multiple parts. So let's begin with part one. So what is a signal tracer? In my opinion, it's a poor man's oscilloscope. It's a high gain, high impedance amplifier generally used to troubleshoot RF and audio stages. Most have a means to select between RF and audio, have an RF gain control, and a speaker. Others included a meter or a magic eye to monitor the levels, and some had tone generators to inject signals into the circuits. But whatever model you had, the end result is an aid in troubleshooting. Here we have a Heathkit signal tracer, a model T3. I've been looking for one of these for years. Every time I find one though, it's just too expensive. Uh, recently on eBay, I found this. Uh, it is really beat up. Uh, it said that in the listing that it was not working and that it couldn't be checked. So I have no idea what we're getting into here. You can see that the the top is really corroded. So are the sides, the back. The bottom is losing most of its paint. On the front, we have a switch for speaker on off, a high gain on or off for the probe. We have two inputs. One is an RF which goes into the first tube. The audio goes into the second tube, but it also has voltage on it when it's in the noise position. We have a gain control. We have a three position switch for tracer, for noise, and for the watt meter. We have an eye tube, the plug for the watt meter, a variable pot on off. When adjusted and watching the eye, it will tell you what the wattage is on the load. We have a speaker voice coil test and we have a B plus transformer here. So let's open it up and see what we have on the inside. On the back we have two screws. On the inside, it looks like we do have some more rust and debris. The case is bent and damaged. Looking on the inside, we have our transformer, power transformer. We have a wattage meter transformer. We have the audio transformer, the filter cap, the first amplifier, second amplifier, the diode, which I believe is a full wave rectification. 
on the underside on the underside we have a bunch of old wax caps that have to be replaced these caps need to be replaced we have an electrolytic here that needs to be replaced we need to check out each one of the resistors and hope that the eye tube is still in good shape so what we need to do is make some basic measurements You need to check the power cord, see if it's operational. Okay, that side looks good. That side looks good. Now, do we have continuity between the two of them? No, we don't. Is there a fuse? No, there's no fuse. This is the primary. primary is open Which also shows open. Oh, there's the primary right there. But the switch looks bad. Okay. If I look closely at the switch, it does look as if there's some sort of residue all over it. Huh. Okay, we know the switch is bad. Secondary, this is high voltage and center tap and center tap. That looks good. We have two coming out. Here, that looks good. Then it looks like we have a 12 point looks like we have a 12.6. Heading in this direction. Okay.
Okay, the transformer looks good. Let's turn it over. Let's check the speaker. Speaker looks good. We have one leg of the transformer. That's the output side. That's the input. And the transformer looks good. Okay. Initial checks are done. Okay, I think the first thing I want to do is see what we can do about making this switch work. So let's take off the knob on the front. We're going to take a picture of this switch. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is not soldered. So I've labeled these as 1, 2, and 3. This switch wire right down here doesn't matter which leg it goes to.
Okay. Now we need to undo this. Oh, I need to find my sockets. And we have the switch here. Okay, there is the pot, and here is the switch. Okay, this wire should pop down now. And this assembly should come off. Just like that. And I am not seeing any mechanism inside. There are two contacts back here. that need to be made. When this lever moves one direction or the other, I've got nothing there. Okay, to continue on, I went ahead and reassembled the back of the volume control minus the switch. Let's reinsert this back into the unit so that we can continue testing it. You can see that I just temporarily tack those in because they're going to need to come off when I get the new switch. We're going to bypass the switch here by shorting out the switch wire. And we're going to put a little heat shrink over it. There, now we can go ahead and continue on. This is the end of part one of the Heathkit T3 signal tracer. Please join me for the next part where we'll continue on rebuilding the signal tracer. If you found this video useful or entertaining, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to click on the bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Stay safe. Stay healthy, and thanks for watching.